This is my fourth Xtool product. I don't know if you have Xtool or if you're watching this review and how to because you're looking at purchasing or if you're looking at upgrading. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over what's included, what it does, why you need it, is it worth your time? All right, so there we got it open here. Foam doesn't really stay in place, but nice protector for the screen. Gives you a packing list of everything that's involved here. You do have an owner's manual or user's manual, which I always advise people to read because there may be some things it does that you're unsure of or didn't know how to operate or features that uh, were kind of hidden. All right, it comes with a charger and the charger cable. Also the DLC connector means diagnostic link connector. Right, and here's the actual tablet itself. Pretty, pretty sturdy and stout. Uh, it feels kind of like a urethane corners here. All right, there's a seal so people don't jack the thing and try to cut it open or whatnot, but uh, fairly simple to use. Once you turn it on, you're gonna go through all the prompts of your language, your setting, your login, which you don't really need a login, but it creates somewhat of an account with Xtool. So when you do submit issues, at least it's tied back to your email and your information so they know who you are, right? Also your serial number and stuff. So pretty neat little startup screen. Let me try not to get no glare on here. It's an Android based tablet. Pretty slim, slim in function, easy to hold. I wish there was some kind of a, a stand on the back. Now that it's up, once you're connected to Wi-Fi, your updates will populate seeing if there's any updates or whatnot. I am way out in my garage at home. I'm not at the shop. I'm actually a 20 plus year veteran of being at a Mercedes-Benz dealer, uh, Mercedes-Benz Master Tech. I've worked independence, had my own shop for a bit. I've been in the world for quite some time, in the automotive world, I mean. So, but uh, these are all the options here you have on the home screen. Again, this is my fourth or maybe fifth X12 product. All of the screen layouts are pretty much identical which is pretty intuitive. It's not like you gotta relearn how to use it with a different model, or just maybe more in the special functions, depending on what you wanna do. So starting out with the special functions, these are all of the things that makes and models will need done, but not every make and model, right? So it'll give you some key programming, but not maybe not every model, depending on what you need done, will it, will it account for, all right? So keep that in mind. Instrument cluster, it may not do all makes and models. There's PDFs that tell you what makes and models it will be good for and a list of everything. If I want to go to Benz, I want to put the E-Class, the 211. I'm not connected to the car, so it's probably not going to do anything. I'm not sure how much we'd be able to do with actual keys with this unit. So I'm just starting to work with Xtool, get more and more of their higher end scanners to see what's going on. Oh, we're in a cluster, that's right, I'm sorry. We may be able to change mileage on certain clusters, whether it be to advance them. I'm not sure if it only does advancing or if it does rewinding, but in the Mercedes world, we can only advance the cluster one time when we install a cluster and we really can't install used clusters. So as far as special functions, there's gonna be a bunch of different ones that are offered depending on the car or the make model and if it's actually possible to be done, all right? Report is after you run your scan, it'll save the report. Remote controls, if you want someone to remote control in to help use your scanner and diagnose some things. I'm not sure if they help with diagnosis, but it'll help with the function of the scanner. Uh, there's auto scan, which we would read the VIN and it will figure itself out from there. Or if we go to diagnosis, we're gonna manually pick the car that we have. I have a Mercedes here in my garage. I actually got two that we're gonna work with today just to give a, a, a test on it and see how it does. All right, and then settings is all your settings for everything. Okay. And then more is your user's manual, which is nice. So we're gonna go ahead and get this hooked up to the car and we're gonna see the features and functions of it and see if it's something that is gonna be useful. A test guinea pig is a 2005 Mercedes-Benz S600. It is a 220 chassis. And I like using this old car because from what I find is a lot of people that want DIY scanners, they're working on old cars. So I use a mix of old cars and new cars to see what the scanner's capable of doing. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to screen record. All right, here we go. So what I'm going to do is 
first I'm going to show you the manual pick. So I'm going to pick diagnosis. I'm going to pick Mercedes or Benz as they call it. Automatic detection. Finds the car by the VIN. Now the VIN reading really didn't start till like 2005, 2006. So if you have an older model than that, it may not pick it up. So don't think that uh, it's not going to work. If you have an older car, it just won't work on older cars. So it'll still work on newer cars, again, five and six and later. But if you have an earlier model, it may or may not pick up the VIN because that was a feature that they came out with later in the years. So here I can pick automatic scan. It's gonna scan all of the modules. I can pick system selection and I can manually pick which module I wanna read. There's special functions, which we will select and see. This is where we would go for the special functions. So what I found in the past is when you're on the home screen and pick special functions, it will not let you do some things. You've got to actually go into the module or into the Mercedes-Benz system program and then pick special functions and it'll work from there. We're gonna back up one. We're gonna go to initial startup. That means when you put a new module in, you do initial startup and it sets the module into, into function. Um, allows you to program and code it. And programming and coding, they're often misleading terms. Uh, in this old model, there's not a whole lot of programming. There's more so just coding, meaning you're telling it what module that it's in. So here I'll show you system selection. We'll go to drive, we'll go to engine module. So now I'm in the engine module, all right? I'm gonna back out and I will do automatic scan and we'll watch it automatically scan for all the modules. So it's showing you that there's a possibility of 69 control modules. So it's gonna scan for all of them and it's gonna report back which ones actually read or report back to the scanner, which is also uh, helpful in trying to diagnose it. Because if you know you have a problem with the transmission, but you can't read the transmission and it's not showing up on your scan, well, that's a symptom that you have a problem with the transmission module. So that's actually good news that you can't read it because now you know you should check power, grounds, and data voltage to, this, to the module. With the OEM scanner, it actually knows if a module's supposed to be there. So it will show you an exclamation mark saying it can't communicate with it, or this one may just not show up on a scan. So you gotta be uh, cautious in knowing what modules should be installed. That way you know which one you actually have a failure or miscommunication with. All right, so it's finally finished doing its scan. It took about three to four minutes. Um, it does take time. This is not a OEM scanner, it's an aftermarket. So the communication between this and the car is gonna take what it's gonna take. So you gotta be patient with these things. There's, there's, no, there's no way around it. The speed of the tablet does play a factor, um, I found. So if you have a smaller tablet that doesn't have that much uh, RAM or a, a fast processor, it will take more time, but uh, you get what you pay for, you know? So in the diagnostics, it's showing you everything in red or orange lettering is a failure. I can go to DTC report and it makes a report, tells you what module had what codes in it and if the code is current or stored. This is useful when sending it to a customer of mine or even a friend that I'm reading codes on, it keeps track of it. So when you do the report, it'll save it. So you can go back and see the difference between the first report and then after the repair report on you know uh, the difference in what codes you cleared out and what codes still need uh, addressed. You can mail it to yourself. Um, I'm not sure if you can set up a printer with this. I did not see that option. All right, so we're gonna go back. One thing I do in all of my videos, if you watch any of my review videos, is I show why you need a scanner like this. Back in the day, whenever you push the button, any button you push, it just sent power or ground directly to whatever worked. It doesn't do that anymore. Now when you push a button, it's a power ground that goes to a control module. The control module says, oh, you push the switch, I'll go ahead and activate the thing. So then the control module activates the item, whether it be through a relay or direct power. So one example I like to use is I use, like to use a driver's side door. So I'm going to find the driver's side door control module. So we got door control module front left. I'm gonna to go to diagnose or diagnosis. I should have registered it. Let me try it again. Diagnosis, there we go. It's asking what we have here. We have seat heater and ventilation and we have seat memory. And I tell this cause I got seat heat, seat cool and seat memory. 
Now the factory scanner doesn't ask you those questions because it knows based on the VIN what, what options are in the car. All right, so in here, we're gonna do two things. Let's say that the issue is your window is not working. You push the switch, nothing happens, you're not sure what to do. So first, we're gonna do is, we'll just read the code. Let's see if there's a code for the, for the window. Uh, for an example, there is no code for the window, right? So that doesn't help us any. Now we're gonna go to live data. What I'm looking for is, let's try, we're gonna back up a second. First, we're gonna go to driver power window switch group, which is the switches. And the first thing I wanna see is, is the switch reading? Is the control module reading what the switch is telling it? So I'm gonna use the switch and I'm pressing it down and now it says manually down. Now I'm gonna do automatic down and it shows automatic down. Now I'll do manual up and automatic up. All right, so by using the scanner, I now know that the control module reads the switch. That tells me the switch is good. It tells me for the most part, the module is good because it's getting the switch signal. So I know that's good, the connection's good, and the module for the most part is good. Because in this car, the module then activates the motor. We've seen it work, but we're using this for testing, right? But we wanna see if it's actually controlling or can control the window motor. So now that I know the switch is reading, I can move on from the switch. We're gonna go to the motor. This is live data. So as we use it, it's showing that there's value on the hall sensor. It's showing that the power window is actuated, yes. Okay. So now let's say that it was shown, yes, it was actuated, yet it still wasn't working. That means that the module's trying to activate the motor, all right? See how it also shows closing relay is actuated? It's because the module is activating the internal relay to activate the motor. So now we can say that the, the module sees the switch. The module's supposed to be activating the motor. If the motor's not working, even though ours is, now we're gonna focus on is the module actually activating the motor? How do we do that? We go to not live data, but actuation test. Power window, actuate power window. And now I'm going to use the scanner to close it. F1, it's already closed. F2, it's opening. Okay, I'm gonna close it. Now it's going up. So now what we would do is, let's say we're activating up and down but nothing's happening, now we can take the door panel off and check power ground at the motor. If you're getting power and ground when activating it, but nothing's happening, we know we have a bad motor. That's why you need something like this. You have to see what the car is seeing and then try to activate or make happen whatever you want to happen, all right? If you didn't have this and the window didn't work, what would you do? You'd buy a switch, that didn't fix it. Uh, you'd buy the module, that didn't fix it. Uh, you buy a motor, well, that didn't fix it and the whole time there was a switch to wire issue. So basically by having this scanner, we're able to accurately diagnose the window issue. That's why you need something like this. And you can do this with every door or every control module. Uh, another one we will do really quick as a test is I will see if I can honk the horn. I'm just gonna go right into the module myself. All right, so we're in the horn relay screen and I'm gonna activate the horn. And there you go. So with the scanner, I can do what the module can do. All right, that's, that's, what, that's what we need in order to accurately test whatever system we have a problem with because we don't know if the module is actually sending the power out, so we try to force it to happen with this. So let's try live data. And we're gonna to go to another module that has better live data. Let's do the other SAM again. Live data. So we're gonna see whatever the module sees. So we're gonna to go to light switch. So right now it shows everything is off. So we're gonna turn it on marker lights. So we got side lamps on. Now we're going to do headlights. 
driving lights are on. We got it on auto. Right parking lamp on. Left parking lamp on. Got fog lights on. All right, so now if we had a problem with the lights, we would need to use this to see if it's showing what the switch is showing. Steering column. We can use the switch. Move the column up. Move it in. Move it out. Move it down. I hope that helps you better understand why you need something like this if you're going to diagnose your car, all right? If you're a do-it-yourselfer, or if you're wondering why a mechanic needs a scanner, or if you're looking into getting into cars and you need to know what kind of things you need to diagnose cars, these are absolutely necessary. They're necessary in anything past like 98. Anything up to 98, you may have one or two control modules, but as of 98 in most of the cars, and even now, there can be 110 different control modules in the car. There's so much that we have to go through to try to diagnose things. I do like the X-Tool brand. I like the scanner a lot. I've been using it in the shop. Like I said, I work at a dealership. I've been using it in the shop to run up to check a customer's car to see if it's something they need to drop off or can bring back later, or if it's okay to drive or whatnot. Um, and it's done very well for me. It doesn't show a lot of actuations for the brand new cars. I'll try it in a few minutes on the other car in my front garage, which is a 2020. It's a 2006 it's compared to a 2020. We'll, we'll run it really quick on that one to see what it can do. But uh, I, I do like the X-Tool brand. Um, I didn't hear about them until they sent me the A30M. I've done three reviews so far, maybe four. I did the A30M, I did the 508S, I did the IP616, and now I'm doing the D7. I like their scanners. I like them a lot. They're, they're very consistent. They work very much similar with the same software, but there's cutoffs. So with the 508, you only get uh, four systems you can read up to just live data and clear codes. With the 608 or 616, I'm sorry, you can uh, read all the control modules, but you can only read them. You can't activate anything. But now with the D7, you can do all of that and you can activate them. Now with the A30M, I'm really impressed with that one because it's just a VCI that plugs in with an app on your phone. I use it on my iPad. That thing does a lot. I use it in my air suspension video. It's very much a competitor to this guy. So to me, it's a uh, very competitive competitive between the A30M and this guy, you know, depending on the amount of money you want to spend and what kind of features you're looking for and how many cars you look at doing. If you're going to do a multitude of cars, you may want to look at this guy. Either way, if you do get either one, make sure there's a 30-day return policy because with the return policy, at least you're not stuck with the thing if you don't like it. All right, so uh, I'm going to hook it up to the other bends and then we'll get you guys wrapped up and, and out of here. All right, so as far as a review, I like the thing. I wouldn't deter you from buying this thing. Uh, if you watch any of my other review videos, I'm not trying to sell you anything. There's going to be a link down below to the Amazon page for the seller for this. Um, I'm not making money off this product. The company sends me these in order for me to do the review. They send me these free of charge and they're mine to use at my disposal. So I don't have to give a good review. I don't have to give a bad review. I just use it and show you guys what I encounter with them so you can make a uh, educated decision. So for me, I'm a terrible purchaser. I'm a calculated impulse buyer. I get the impulse and I wait. I do as much research and looking up as I can I check prices, I check reviews, I check return policies, I check uh, functions of it, I compare it to other models, is it worth it? Is it something that I need, something that I want? What I try to do in my review is help, help you make a decision on if it's something that you want or need or have to have. Um, in today's cars, again, have to have something to read with the modules you're reading. There's different levels of scanner, ones that read just the engine module for the check engine light, all the way up to ones that will read every module, program every module, code every module, program keys, do scoping, do tire monitor learns. There's all kinds of different variations of them and different levels in those variations. So uh, do your homework, you know, so I hope this helps you. Uh, leave in the comments if I touched on things that um, were helpful or if there's other things you would have liked to have seen. I have all these scanners at my disposal, so I will be using these in many videos to come. All right, my name is Lou. I hope this helps. Uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe, hit the like, maybe share it with a buddy or colleague or forum or something like that. If you found this video very helpful, there's a super thanks down below. I'll give you a shout out uh, if you give me a super thanks, but uh, hey, you guys take care. Thanks a lot.